Dude, okay, so big updates out of the Ottawa Senator system based off of what Bruce Garriock says here on the Ottawa Sun. Take a look at this article over here, Snapshots. If Brady Kachuk wants to start the season with the Ottawa Senators, he will have to sign soon. Now, I know that headline is like, well, duh. Yeah, like, okay, you're not really revealing anything new there, Bruce, but either way, this is the article. Link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this. Go ahead and do that. It's a great read. Sens GM Pierre Dorian has kept in constant contact with Kachuk's Toronto-based agents Craig Oster and Don Meehan of Newport Sports. Take a look at the update that we had over here. It talks about, at the very beginning, this article does, how Elias Pettersson and Quinn Hughes have both re-signed with the Canucks. Meaning that Brady Kachuk is pretty much the last unsigned, restricted free agent around the NHL, and that the actual season starts October 14th, meaning that Kachuk has to sign soon if he wants to get out there and play 82 games on the year. Take a look at what exactly it is we have highlighted over here from Pierre Lebrun. The gap isn't really large, with the Senators believed to have tabled an eight-year deal worth $8 million a season. We'd spoken about that, the $64 million proposal that was apparently rejected by the Kachuk camp. But TSN's Pierre Lebrun indicated Friday there was still work to be done to get a deal. He said the Kachuk camp was seeking north of $8.4 million a season on a long-term deal. Now, north, what does that mean? That means more than, right? That's kind of what it means, I think. North of $8.4 million. Let's just say $8.5 plus for Brady Kachuk would have been the ask for a long-term deal. Now, this is honestly kind of interesting. I know a lot of Senators fans out there really like Brady Kachuk, and they understand the value that this guy has. We've spoken about that value a ton over the past few weeks here on this YouTube channel. A big body, strong body. He goes out there, he plays a heart and soul, banging, crashing kind of game that kind of embodies what exactly it is the Senators want to enforce on the ice out of all of their players. Kachuk is captain-worthy material, and he's a guy who, if you go out there and you say, all right, long-term he is going to be a lot better than he is right now, it becomes a lot easier to say, okay, if we go eight years, then let's pay him a little bit more than what he's worth right now, and then some too. Because if you take a look at what Brady Kachuk has done in the previous three seasons he has played in the National Hockey League, yeah, it's tough to believe. He has played three full years in the NHL already, 45 points in 71 games in his first year, 44 points in 71 games in his second year, 36 points in 56 games in the most previous season of play. If you do the math on his most recent season, 36 points, 56 games played, and you multiply it out to 71 games... He was on pace for a 46.71 game year. So, pretty much, Brady Kachuk has been the exact same hockey player in all of the three years he has had in the NHL thus far. Yes, I get it, he has progressed more in terms of maturity, and maybe the fine details have been a little bit more tuned out now compared to before, but... This is kind of the case you have over here with Kachuk, where point production-wise, he literally has not gotten any better since he was 18 years old. And it's honestly kind of funny how that happens. It's almost miraculous how a guy can go over here in the NHL and consistently put up 45-point seasons in 71-game paces. It's been exactly the same, and now you're in a position where the contract talks are like, yes, we know you can be better. We're expecting you to be better as the Senators team gets better and as you get older, but is this profile a consistent 45 point in 71 game guy? If you do the math on that, okay, let's do 45 divided by 71 multiplied out by 82 on pace for 52 points. He's a 52 point guy and he has been consistently over 82 games in years 1, 2, and 3. Would you feel comfortable giving $8.4 million for the next 8 seasons for this guy? Honestly, I wouldn't. 
Matthew got $7 million on a three-year extension, but the difference is when Matthew signed his contract, he was coming off of a 77-point campaign. That was just under a point per game, and Brady is nowhere near that level of impact with the Senators. Now, you could say it's proportionate because, oh, he's got a bigger role in Ottawa, because Ottawa is a bad team, because Calgary has Gaudreau and Monaghan and they had Giordano and all that stuff. It makes it a lot easier to say that Brady proportionally is more important, but... Still, you're not comparing it to the rest of the team, you're comparing it to the rest of the league, and Matthew Kachuk had himself a 7 million AAV extension for three seasons after coming off of an almost point per game year. Brady Kachuk has been a 52 point pace player over 82 games literally every single year, and the going rate for an 8 year extension is 8.4 plus? We're talking 8.5, 8.6? Oh my goodness. Just from hearing that from Pierre Lebrun, you know, I think you're going to have to sign this guy short term. Short term, bridge deal, whatever, because it's just too much of a risk. It's way too much of a risk to go out there and pay a 52 point player eight point whatever million dollars a season, even with the guarantee that he will be better as his years go on, you know? Like, I get it. Both of the Kachuks are good, talented hockey players, and they're both in their early 20s, but it's a big risk for 8.4. If you're trying to go out there and negotiate anything a little bit shorter than that, though, it's tough to believe that the asking price would be anywhere in the realm of feasible or rational, in my opinion. Because if you're going out there asking 8.4 by 8, what is he asking for 5? Is it $8 million? What is he asking for 3? Is it 7.5? Is it 7? I mean, his brother got 7 and his brother was a lot more productive. I know that Matthew said that this is a family process with Brady going out there and doing these contract negotiations with the Senators, but it's kind of getting ridiculous at this point, isn't it? Especially with the recent RFA signings, too. Elias Pettersson got 7.35 on a three-year deal. If Brady Kachuk goes 3, he shouldn't be higher than Elias Pettersson. He shouldn't. Plain and simple. He should not be higher. Honestly, you could debate that even Quinn Hughes should be higher than him. If Brady gets six and he breaks that $7.85 million barrier, he'd be getting a higher AAV than Hughes for the same amount of time. And honestly, I mean, if you'd ask me from scratch, would I rather have Pedersen or Kachuk? I'd rather have Petey. Would I rather have Quinn Hughes or Brady? I'd rather have Quinn. I had Quinn ranked higher in my draft rankings in 2018. I kind of remember this stuff. So... Yeah, it's kind of getting a little bit ridiculous. It's a really astronomically high price over here that Brady Kachuk is apparently demanding from the Ottawa Senators north of $8.4 million on an eight-year deal. I thought the 8 by 8 proposal was already kind of bonkers because, I mean, he's been a consistent 52-point guy. He hasn't really progressed in that respect. I know he'll get better, and it's more likely that he gets more than 52 points a season for the rest of his seasons until the end of his next contract. But... It's like that Kotchaniemi syndrome, you know? You don't want to be paying a 20, 30-point guy $6.1 million on a year. That's just not really rational in the way you run your hockey team. And if Brady Kachuk gets to the best version of himself, I highly doubt it takes a year for him to get there. I highly doubt it takes him two or three years. I think it takes a minimum of four for him to reach his utmost potential of maybe getting 80 or 85 points in a season. And do you want to be paying this guy... 8.4, 8.5 million dollars a year as he progresses through getting 55 to 59 to 64 to 70 points in a year. It's just going to be a slow burn with Brady. And honestly, I don't really think that what he has done so far is good enough to show for it. Now, maybe there is that Leon Dreisaitl syndrome coming back into play here. When Leon Dreisaitl signed his eight-year by $8.5 million extension, he was coming off of a 77-point campaign himself. So he was already a good point producer at the National Hockey League level. It's just as the years went by, you know, you take a look at Dreisaitl now, Hart winner, Art Ross winner. He is out here as one of the best players in the league, only making $8.5 million. It's seen as an underpayment, a huge underpayment for the caliber of talent that Dreisaitl possesses. So... In my opinion, there isn't really a legitimate, rational, comparable you can make for Brady Kachuk to justify anything over the range of $7 million for whatever contract he gets. If it's three years, you got Barzal and Point and Pedersen all in that $7 million range. If it's six years, I mean, Quinn Hughes, I get he's a defenseman, but still the caliber of talent over there, they're the same age as well. It's kind of tough to negotiate that, in my opinion. 
eight years long and getting over 8.4. My goodness, that is a big, 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 big ask. I get that people can say, oh, you make your asking price super high so that you work down towards a number that you're actually comfortable with and that the team is comfortable with, but you rejected it by eight already, man. Come on. Eight million dollars AAV for Brady Kachuk, dude. Hi, yeah, yeah. that's a really big ask there. If you have anything you want to add to this conversation, please let me know in the comments what do you think. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.